Hello and welcome to this roundtable on SPE, Single Pair Ethernet, hosted by TE Connectivity. My name is Mark Maas and I will be uh, facilitating this roundtable. Don't forget, during this session and also after the session, you can add your questions in the chat window. I will now introduce briefly the panelists in this meeting, starting with Alex McGay. He's our VP and CTO within the Industrial Business Unit, so responsible for the engineering part. Next is Ruud van der Brink. He's a product manager within Industrial Communication and responsible for the EMEA region. And we've got Ted Tsarkowski, product manager, also within Industrial Communication, but then for the Americas. And last but not least, Pete Smith. Uh, he's within the Sales and Marketing Division of Sensor Solutions. Welcome all. So let's start with this roundtable and let's start with trying to find out why single pair Ethernet is relevant. First question, Ruud, can you explain a little bit more on what is single pair Ethernet? Yeah, I think uh, that everybody has uh, heard of the terminology Ethernet and is uh, very familiar with uh, the present uh, variants uh, of Ethernet that are around four wire, eight wire variants, uh, RJ45 uh, plugs uh, and connectors to terminate uh, those connections. Single pair Ethernet is different uh, from the fact that it is only one single pair uh, that is used for the transmission and also when necessary for uh, the power of the remote uh, device. Um, yeah, single pair Ethernet, as said, uh, it's an addition to already existing uh, variants of, uh, of Ethernet uh, with a specific, uh, um, let's say, industrial uh, user case behind it. Okay, thank you, Ruth. Uh, then, Ted, if you can elaborate a little bit on the benefits and why is SPE relevant to customers? Yes, yeah, sure, Mark, uh, and thank you. Yes, so the main benefit of single pair Ethernet, SPE, is that it provides a single open and scalable Ethernet based network within an automation system. Uh, as a result, this generates many opportunities for our customers, such as miniaturization of devices, increased efficiency of devices, and also remote power feeding uh, mentioned by, by Rude. Uh, as you know, historically, multi-wire infrastructure was needed for fast 100 megabits per second ethernet, and even more wires for gigabit ethernet uh, were required. Now, with SPE, only two wires are needed for data and power. Uh, as you know, uh, or we're going to explore, explore that, uh, SPE offers Poodle power over data line option as well as hybrid data and power line alternative. Uh, this significantly reduces network complexity, costs, and enables customers to go beyond existing borders. Uh, today, customers need more efficient infrastructure as the automation field level has grown significantly. More and more sensors require transmission rates that field bus systems can no longer support. At the same time, the existing Ethernet infrastructure is too expensive, too large, and oversized for most of uh, field applications. Therefore, a slim, lightweight, lightweight, and powerful infrastructure for Ethernet is needed to enable the industry to digital, digitalize uh, at the field level and therefore take the step into IIoT, uh, which is Industrial Ethernet, Internet of Things. This is where SPE comes in. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ted. It was a Quite a nice list of, uh, of benefits. Ruth, um, can you elaborate a little bit more on which applications uh, SPE is relevant for and is it more suited for green field or for brown field or for both? Yeah, thanks uh, Mark. Um, yeah, like uh, Ted introduced, um, um, Ethernet, uh, single pair Ethernet is addressing uh, a gap, especially if you look at the edge of uh, the network uh, which is traditionally, uh, let's say, connected through bus systems and, uh, and serial communications. 
um, SPE is a solution that brings uh, that brings Ethernet to the network edge. So that is um, in the case of uh, IIoT, as uh, Ted uh, says so, and uh, Ethernet all over the place. Um, Single-pair uh, Ethernet uh, is then having an advantage that the total network can be addressed uh, through IP uh, network addresses, and it also has the uh, uh, the other advantage that uh, uh, the gateways that are necessary to bring uh, bus uh, data into an Ethernet world uh, and the other way around uh, can be uh, uh, removed out of the network. So, um, all in all, a number of advantages, uh, both from a cost point of view, as well as from a transparency point of view. Um, Greenfield and Brownfield, um, if we look at the adoption of such technologies, uh, they are likely to be adopted in, uh, in smaller, uh, smaller rollouts uh, that can uh, be hooked up to the traditional uh, four-wire or eight-wire uh, uh, Ethernet. Uh, and I think that they will um, be a kind of a greenfield in a brownfield application uh, space. Thank you, Mark. Okay, thank you, Ruud. Um, Pete, from your end, from the Samsung's perspective, anything to add here? Um, yeah, there are a couple things I'd like to mention. Um, first of all, the adoption of SPE is going to help solve a particular problem we have in sensors. Um, to be compatible with so many different systems and capabilities out there, we have to offer sensors for, as an example with nine different connector types. And this is the physical connector where you actually make connection. And among those nine different types, we have to offer the electrical output in seven different formats. And so uh, uh, what it does is it creates a very complicated uh, formula that you have to think through when you're uh, designing your system, what particular connector types and what kind of uh, electrical formats you want. SPE will bring a standardization to that so that everything will be using similar connector, physical connector types, and will be using similar interface types for the, elect uh, for the electrical signals. So we view this as a, a big benefit uh, uh, in terms of reducing cost and, some, and adding simplicity to the whole system. Yeah, this definitely sounds like almost a dream in uh, reducing complexity. Very good. Um, Ruud, we, you, you already briefly discussed on IIoT at the Industrial Internet of Things. How does SPE fit in there? How does it support the Ethernet everywhere? Um, like that, uh, the traditional uh, industrial networks are today built up out of uh, Ethernet uh, portions, uh, bus um, um, portions, and uh, serial communications. And especially the bus and serial communications, you find that the um, the network edge, um, IIoT, and actually bringing Ethernet everywhere is replacing the traditional technologies at the network edge. Uh, by an Ethernet solution uh, that is uh, a complement to the already uh, available Ethernet in such a network. Um, bringing Ethernet to the edge um, is bringing the advantages of having a total flat network uh, with only one transmission technology, avoiding, as said earlier, all the gateways and um, translation uh, requirements uh, between uh, the various um, uh, transmission systems that are used in today's uh, network. Um, what is, um, 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 I would say, uh, relevant in this is that it uh, it can be done quite easily, um, interfacing uh, single pair Ethernet to the traditional Ethernet network uh, infrastructure uh, by using media gateways, and that can uh, can be the connection between uh, the old style, old world uh, Ethernet and uh, the single pair Ethernet at the network edge. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ruud. Um, Alex, from an engineering point of view, do you have anything to add to, uh, to what you've heard before? What I would like to highlight once again, and <clears throat> this was um, already mentioned before, but looking from the customer's perspective and from customer's system architect perspective, single pair Ethernet provides really a ton of benefits. 
on one side flexibility so in terms of being able to connect any end device at every node of the network and then uh, drastically reduce complexity on what we just spoke about. And this combination of increased flexibility and drastically reduced complexity, this is actually the absolute plus point from, if we look at it from the customer system architect's perspective. This is something, and just one thing also to add, it's not only transitioning of data, data but what was mentioned a couple of times before, power, power over data line. So, simple smaller sensors can also be powered by this network as well and this once again brings an additional degree of uh, freedom in terms of flexibility so i think this is definitely a win-win for our customers yeah, thank you Mark. Sounds good. um so reduced complexity uh more flexibility that all sounds good but in the end everything is down to cost so um ted can you uh, comment on the total cost of ownership that SPE can have benefits on. Yes, Mark, uh, definitely. So, single pair Ethernet SPE can potentially replace all field advanced yeah. technologies because it enables Ethernet only automation. Uh, as SPE is standardized in IEC 61 6317-1-6, it offers both IP20 and IP67 solutions. Uh, single pair ethernet provides data transmission rates up to one gigabit uh, of uh, uh, transmission rates over a single twisted copper pair. Uh, by reduction from four or eight wires of the traditional fast ethernet and gigabit ethernet towards two wires, uh, this technology enables smaller connector sizes and decreases the termination effort. It is suitable to bring Ethernet down uh, to the sensor level and to connect sensors directly to IT systems, or uh, you may refer to it as a cloud, and to support the, uh, the added value services of the industrial Ethernet of Things, IIoT. A uh, single pair Ethernet cable is smaller. It is also less costly compared to conventional two and four twisted pair construction. So specifically cable di diameter uh, with SPE is reduced by about 25%. Uh, there's also less cable weight, smaller cable, uh, less weight and volume of the cable uh, uh, and reduction of potentially up to yeah. 50%. In addition, the amount of hardware needed to implement the SPE is reduced versus field bus because devices such as gateways are no longer needed. Uh, subsequently, this saves installation space and costs. So overall, the construction, operation, and maintenance of automation system becomes more efficient and cost effective. In conclusion, for the first time, Ethernet can communicate, communicate space and cost efficiently from the cloud to the field level, and total cost of ownership can be drastically reduced, especially in comparison with traditional field bus systems. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ted. Um, Pete, from Sandro's perspective, what would you like to add to this? There are, um, we are starting to see from the sensor side some inquiries from customers asking us to provide multiple sensor capabilities for specific applications. And to address that, we are actually in the process of creating what we call multi sensor modules. I think another word that's sometimes used is fusion, where we're sticking two sensor capabilities in the same package. And for example, we'll do a pressure sensor and a temperature sensor in the same in the same package, or we might do a speed sensor and an accelerometer in the same package. And what that does is it uh, provides a cost advantage, particularly to the customer. And SPE allows us to communicate the data from both of those sensors over a single pair of lines. And so 
Um, this reduces the cost of cabling, reduces the cost of installation, and it makes a much more compact package so that we're actually taking up less space on the equipment that's in a factory. So um, this SPE is very, very beneficial to uh, in implementing some of these multi-sensor modules that we're working on. So uh, it, is a, it is a big help. Uh, Mark, back to you. Thanks, Pete. Well, that's that's good to hear all these benefits. Um, Ruth, if you then look at some examples of where SPE is used and what kind of applications in the factory would that be? Yeah, thanks, Mark. Um, yeah, if you look at uh, at the traditional uh, Ethernet, the four and eight wire Ethernet, uh, there's one thing uh, a big big limitation, and that is. Uh, the length of the connections it goes up to 100 meters and with a repeater it can go up to 200 meters but that is uh, that is all if you look at a typical uh, factory environment uh, you see the shorter connections uh, uh, that are there and uh, we would be able to address them with single pair ethernet at speeds of one gig uh, and 100 uh, 100 megabit um, however uh, not only the short distances are of interest in uh, such an uh, such an environment uh, but also uh, the longer distance connections. The point-to-point -point connections up to one kilometer uh, covered by the field buses today uh, can be covered by the 802.3 CG standard uh, in single pair Ethernet. Uh, we've seen uh, already uh, a number of active devices that uh, can bring that uh, distance even up to uh, about 1.7 kilometers, so well beyond uh, that particular standard. So that is addressing one. And then there is another uh, type of application where a single pair Ethernet is uh, playing a vital role, and that is not in the point-to-point, -point, but the so-called multi-drop environment. Uh, that allows you to bring a number of uh, peripheral devices uh, very close on a uh, bus-like system, uh, like a 25, 25 meters long and up to about eight devices uh, uh, simultaneously, um, uh, offering a uh, structure which is more or less uh, similar to uh, to a field bus app uh, application and implementation, uh, but based uh, upon uh, the Ethernet uh, technology. Thank you, Mark. Okay, thank you, Ruud. Uh, Ted, any more examples from the Americas? Ted, I think you're still on mute. Yes, uh, Mark, uh, do apologize for delay, delay here. Another application example and potential use case here could be the one associated with um, an example of warehouse automation. Uh, and in particular, as logistics uh, facilities continue to be in high demand, uh, with examples of companies such as Amazon, FedEx, or UPS, there might be applications with conveyor and, and sorting systems uh, as powered conveyor rollers require relatively low power. Uh, there could be applications not only uh, to power the lower uh, roller itself, but also provide ethernet communication to it. Uh, single pair ethernet in this case would not only reduce the cost of wiring, but also provide predictive maintenance capability, therefore uh, allowing customers to avoid costly equipment lying down, which is so critical to such facilities. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Ted. Um, okay, that sounds great all, a lot of benefits, a lot of examples. Um, now let's step into the next topic, Alex. Um, Obviously, TE is hosting this roundtable, but why would TE be a good partner for companies that want to step into SPE? Thank you, Mark, and this is a great question. Uh, we need also to recall um, the first point that SPE has already its place in other areas than industrial. So it means, for example, in the automotive area, it has been around for quite some time, and this actually giving us the scale, and us, I mean the industry, the scale to work with the semiconductor companies, which are manufacturing the active devices. But it also gives our customers 
uh, insurance and assurance that TE is the right partner because we've got some experience from our colleagues in, in the automotive business unit that we've got this experience to work with the single peer Ethernet. So this is one point. Another point, obviously, our expertise in the connectivity area, in the industrial communi communication area overall. And the last part is obviously the scale and our long lasting experience uh, in the industrial space as well. So connecting these three areas is uh, experience in the automotive area, scale and expertise in the industrial communication area these combinations uh, will give uh, our customers so oem suppliers and end users assurance that te is exactly the right partner to roll out the spe implementation in your domain as well thank you mark thank you alex um good we've been talking a little bit about standards already but which standards are relevant if we talk about SPE within industrial? And how is TE driving these standards? Yeah, there's a couple of different things here, uh, Mark. And um, first of all, uh, IEEE with the various uh, 802.3 uh, standards. Uh, examples are uh, BP, uh, BW, and CG. And um, these are standards, uh, transmission standards on point-to-point -point links with distances uh, of about uh, 40 meters and in the, the case of uh, very long connections uh, over one uh, one kilometer um, and um, these ieee standards are also defining uh, the related uh, transmission speed uh, for those uh, those stretches of, uh, of ethernet that can be covered so that is the the network side uh, length and transmission speed next to it uh, there is the iec and the IEC is defining the connector standards. Um, IEC 63171-6 is the predominant, uh, um, um, let's say, standard for uh, single pair Ethernet uh, connectivity. Um, it offers uh, connectivity uh, both in an IP20 world as well as in an uh, IP67 world. And uh, next uh, to um, remote powering uh, over the data lines, the Poodle, um, uh, let's say, implementations, it offers a uh, connectivity family, uh, which we call an, uh, a metric uh, hybrid uh, a connectivity, and that is next to the uh, two satellite lines. It offers additional connectivity uh, to power up to uh, 8 amp uh, um, uh, remote powering. So for TE, it is extremely important to be part of those standardization groups, IEEE, uh, single pair Ethernet, uh, and actually drive the standards and update the standards uh, where required uh, with uh, respect to single pair Ethernet. Thanks, Mark. Okay, thank you, Ruth. Well, good to hear that uh, TE is taking a very active role in there. Um, Alex. Um, what else does TE contribute to the rollout of uh, SPE? I just uh, thank you, Mark. Is um, the first point I just would like to reinforce what Rud just said in terms of driving standardization. <clears throat> and this is nothing uh, which we can do by ourselves alone. So the Dash Six uh, standard was uh, developed and was uh, published earlier this year, so uh, in January 2020. This was a result of the close co collaboration with multiple suppliers of connectivity of, uh, with the, so of, who worked together on this standard. So this really needs to be highlighted. So no single company can do it by, by itself. And this is why we work together with uh, uh, our competitors and uh, some of our customers to develop the standards. And TE takes a very, very active role in the definition and uh, development of these standards. And also, not, it's not only about developing standards, but also developing products and developing connectors or connectivity solutions to show how this can work in reality. And uh, in our product, there is already some uh, products or some connectors already uh, on sale, so especially IP20 solutions, but also 
further solutions in the M12 uh, form factor already in the pipeline. And these are only two small examples of what is yet to come from TE connectivity. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, I think it's a very valid point, and it's not something that TE can do on its own. Um, Ted, I've heard uh, that there is an SPE partner network. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on it and, and explain what the role of TE is in it? Yes, sure, Mark. Uh, yeah, so SPE partner network uh, had been formed uh, a while ago. That's going to be over a year ago. Uh, T Connectivity is a proud founder uh, and founding member of the SPE SBA partner network. Uh, together with all members, uh, TE uh, is driving this technology to become a standard in the industry. Uh, the SBE industrial partner network is based in Rochten, Germany, and it is an association of companies that promote a single pair ethernet technology as the basis for rapid and successful growth of the IIoT, Industrial Ethernet, Internet of Things. For future users, the network is the first point of contact for all questions concerning, concerning standardization uh, and construction of SPE networks based on components and devices which create an SPE ecosystem. Partner Network provides clear recommendations to, for the development of future uh, IIoT applications, and it is a central information and exchange platform for all participants. Uh, by combining members' competencies, the Partner Network provides users with security that the technology is to be re relied upon. And of course, anyone can open, uh, uh, join the open uh, SPE partner network. Uh, you are welcome to join. It is easy to sign up uh, by visiting our website. Uh, we'll, you will be guided to all the instructions allowing you to become a member as well. Mark? Thank you, Ted. Um, Pete, anything to add from your end on this? Um, yes, I'd like to mention that uh, TE is well known for its connectors and connectivity and cable solutions that they offer to customers. And maybe not quite so much known is the uh, TE has a business unit that's dedicated entirely to sensors. And so um, we represent, I guess a good word to, to describe it would be a one-stop shop. Uh, we can provide you the interconnect capabilities of SPE cabling um, and the expertise to help implement that. But we also have an entire business unit dedicated to sensors. We do a wide variety of sensor products, temperature sensors, pressure sensors, accelerometers, uh, tilt sensors, position and motion sensors, speed sensors. And so we can provide uh, many of the sensor uh, products that you might need as you're developing a system for uh, smart factory applications, industrial IoT, and um, uh, we're, we're developing a number of new products that will specifically play in this area. So um, when you're talking to the uh, teams on the connectors and the cabling for SPE, don't forget to ask about uh, some of our sensors. I'm acting like a salesman here, I'm sorry, but um, we do offer a wide variety of sensor solutions to um, the app the application in smart factory so uh, don't forget that that we are a one-stop shop from that perspective okay mark back to you thank you pete well it's it's nice to see that sbe is providing uh, ethernet everywhere but we can provide the products that go along with it everywhere as well that's that's nice to hear um Lut, anything to add from your end yeah i think uh, i already uh, talked earlier in uh in this um, um, round table about uh, standardization and the importance of, uh, of standardization. Uh, one thing very closely related to that is uh, the so-called user groups. 
the conglomerates of uh, companies that are um, fulfilling uh, a uh, certain approach for a uh, specific application domain. Um, out of those user groups, uh, there is an interest for alternative uh, technologies uh, because um, um, at this very moment, uh, some of the um, application domains are not addressed in the most optimal, uh, optimal form. Um, as such, we see them reaching out to uh, us, STE, but also to the industrial partner network uh, to get educated uh, about single-payer Ethernet, uh, to get an understanding of the technologies and the advantages that it might bring in their, uh, in their application space. Um, examples of such, uh, such user groups are the ODVA group, uh, P&O, uh, CC Link, and uh, some other global initiatives. Uh, and uh, we STE and also uh, as part of our industrial partner network uh, are in continuous dialogue uh, with these type of, uh, of user groups. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Ruud. Um, continuing with you, Ruud, um, if we look at SPE and, and, and the whole um, infrastructure there, what needs to be in place before SPE can adopt it on a, on a broad scale in the industrial world? Yeah, I think uh, you already put up a very nice uh, slide uh, that uh, that addresses that uh, particular story. But first of all, uh, of course, the technology is important as a base, a single pair Ethernet technology. Um, associated to that technology are uh, the standards, uh, and the standards are describing uh, a good number of things. Yeah, uh, the IEEE standards are a good example of that, as discussed, uh, but also uh, IEC as um, the connector interface standards. And there are more uh, like test strategies, uh, like cable uh, specifications, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then, if those standards are in place, uh, what you will see is that the various uh, companies are making the components that are complying to the standards. And if you build an Ethernet uh, port, uh, there's a couple of things you need. Of course, you need a cable that connects to that inter to that uh, Ethernet port. You need a connector technology uh, uh, that is uh, allowing to connect that cable. To a piece of machinery and then within that machinery you need magnetic separation uh, you need uh, the silicon to support it so these components uh, allow you to build the devices that are uh, spe compliant and in the long run with those devices you can build the applications uh, that go and are suited for uh, for spe so all in all you need to build it uh, build up that whole infrastructure and that whole ecosystem uh, to roll out SPE to uh, to the rest of uh, of the world or to the entire world, I should say. Thank you, Mark. Okay, thank you, Ruud. Um, then, if if I uh, may ask that, what is already in place from from the East perspective? Yes, Mark. Uh, so, uh, T is actively developing and uh, soon launching. A series of products. Uh, those products will uh, include uh, both IP20 uh, solutions as well IP as well as IP67 solutions. For IP20 solutions, we are focusing on Poodle power over data line uh, portfolio, and within this portfolio, uh, we are going to offer both connectors and cable assemblies. Uh, in terms of connectors, those are board level connectors that uh, can be uh, implemented on anyone's device. Uh, they will come in uh, different formats. There will be female vertical versions. There will be also female right angle versions initially. And on the cable side, th there will be cable plug, male, straight, uh, and also right angle versions. Uh, and uh, with uh, that, there will be field installable connector plug offered as well. On our roadmap, we're looking at including various types of cable options, uh, ranging from 18 AWG all the way to AWG 26, uh, primarily polyurethane, but uh, we'll go beyond that over time and definitely uh, options with uh, some flexibility to those cables uh, that are suitable for industrial automation types of applications. Uh, 
And then on the IP67 side, uh, the, that design is a hybrid design I, we talked about. And that design uh, combines data line and power line in one connector interface. In this case, it is an M8 hybrid connector and TE's uh, offering, initial offering will include uh, female vertical board level connectors followed by male vertical board connectors. And in the future um, connector side, they're looking at the right angle configurations and of course field installable plugs and sockets. And over time, as, uh, as we uh, been discussing, there is a need for multi-drop types of applications. There will be T-splitters, uh, N-line splitters, and other accessories that will be necessary to deploy such systems. In terms of cable assemblies, uh, we are offering a, an overmolded cable male plug. Uh, there will be female socket as well. Uh, uh, these cable assemblies will come in, in different formats. Uh, single-ended pigtail, pigtails and also double-ended uh, as, uh, as options as those will be necessary. Uh, as far as cable options here, because this is an IP67 type of solution, uh, we're looking into, again, different types of uh, cables, uh, focusing on polyurethane PUR initially. Uh, we're looking into cable offering that uh, provides direct chain and high flex capabilities in the future as well. Uh, so overall, in both cases, IP20 and IP67, we will be launching our initial package uh, shortly. Uh, samples are available of these or uh, both options today and uh, we'll be advising the world as we uh, launch these products uh, uh, when they become available. Uh, we're targeting SPS uh, in Nuremberg uh, this year as the primary timeline for that launch to occur. Back to you, Mark. Thank you, Ted. So that's uh, an extensive overview of things that are coming. Um, Alex, from, from your view, do you have a better idea on what others in the partner network are already offering or <coughs> will be offering in the near future? Yeah, and thank you, Mark. And this is uh, an interesting situation in terms, as I described uh, before, as with the standardization, we need to work with our competitors in the market space to get the technology moving, to get it adopted. And this is the same in, uh, on the product area. So we obviously uh, work closely with our competitors and in some area where there are first competitors to bring the first products to the area. And the examples which showed, um, which are shown on this slide, for example, one of our competitors, uh, Harting, also offering similar products. This is just to get the market moving, to get the adaptation of the technology to our customers. Obviously, in the later stages, we will compete again and we're competing, but just to get this moving, this is why we're working there. On Apart from connectivity, there is also a lot of movement, what Ted described on the uh, um, cable uh, cable side, but also on the, uh, we, we, we mustn't forget also the uh, enhancements or developments on the uh, active side of the things. So on the uh, fire side, and uh, I think Ruth mentioned earlier in the call or earlier in the discussion that there is uh, quite a few developments. And last a couple of days ago, I stumbled upon an announcement from uh, Texas Instrument about the chip, which is uh, a, a, which is capable to communicate over the distance over 1.7 kilometers. And this is also very encouraging development, especially as it is uh, comes to uh, the let's say at a reasonable price. So therefore, I think this combination from the active component, passive components from TE and from our competitors, this will get this technology moving forward and will definitely contribute to the adoption of this technology in the market. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Alex. Um, Pete, on the Sanzos view, what can you add? 
Um, I should tell you that our sensors business unit is uh, made the industrial uh, applications for sensors, a primary um, place where we're looking for new business. Um, it is one of the pillars of our uh, strategy that's been developed just recently, uh, smart factory and industrial applications. The, um, we're looking very hard right now at the best ways to include the connector capabilities into the sensor package. And uh, more importantly, the connectivity would be part, part of it would be the firmware and software that's developed. Many of our sensors uh, have recently uh, been introduced in digital formats so that we uh, uh, not only have analog products, but we'll provide products with uh, digital capability and have uh, be easy, easy for those products to communicate over an SPE type of connection. So um, we're looking forward to introducing a large number of products into this area over the next couple of years. We have that on our roadmap. And uh, I think it'll be very exciting in the fact that uh, the part of TE and the connectors and cabling space uh, and the sensor space, we're all looking at this in the same direction. And I think we're going to see a lot of cooperation between our two business units to provide good solutions for uh, all, all the customers out there. So um, that, that kind of sums it up, Mark, from our perspective. Okay, thank you, Pete. Um, so we've been sharing a lot of information. Uh, Ted, can you elaborate a little bit on where we could find some of this additional information or where people could find it? Yes, Mark, uh, definitely. So uh, there are a number of resources available to you today. Uh, uh, on our website, te.com, uh, there is a landing page dedicated to single pair ethernet and uh, the link and all the information uh, will be uh, shared with you uh, after this uh, round table uh, and uh, will be available to you in addition to an overview page we also have a video that uh, you can watch and in addition to this information there is also a website dedicated to SPE network that uh, talk, talks about uh, uh, members of the network, the reasoning behind having the network that we discussed earlier during this call and uh, provides you with a number of uh, options in terms of uh, identifying your needs, uh, obtaining questions or answers to your questions and, uh, and also signing up uh, to become a member of the SPE partner network. Um, in addition to it, uh, there is uh, information available to you uh, from the SPE partner network Pioneer Summit, which uh, took place uh, earlier in November. Uh, TE experts had not only attended that Pioneer Summit, but they have also presented and those include uh, some of the people on this call, Ruth van der Brink, but also our engineering staff and uh, research and development uh, experts that you will be able to uh, visit the website, uh, review the presentations and, and potentially later ask the questions. Back to you, Mark. Thank you, Ted. Okay, very clear. Um, if we, uh, Alex, if, if I ask you to start dreaming a little bit or, or use your crystal ball or whatever you use to, to look ahead five to 10 years, where do you think that the industrial world will, will be and what will be the place then or the position of SPE in it? That's an excellent, <clears throat> that's an excellent question, Mark. And let's say looking, looking to crystal ball or making predictions is always very dangerous. But I think uh, in this case, we can always say that the drive for flexibility and to reduce complexity will also uh, come into our space. And I think in one of the slides we've, where we showed um, architecture of a network, there is a desire to have one network type throughout the entire stack from enterprise, 
resource planning systems, to the uh, PLC controllers, to the network, to the sensors, or to the end devices. And I think Ethernet is one of the technologies which will win at the end. First, because of uh, its adoption already in the net, in 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 this uh, in the industry, but also about, uh, because of the flexibility from the, from the physical perspective. And in this environment, the place for SPE is to close the Ethernet gap at the edge. What I spoke about uh, earlier in this um, in this talk. So closing this gap would be one thing. That I think SPE is. Uh, at the forefront to win this battle for the edge uh, in the network. I think if you ask me, there will probably also space for some of the wireless connectivity. But I think in the industrial environment, especially in the next five years, the foremost connectivity will be wired. But we need to ensure that this connectivity is as flexible as possible and also with as, as simple as possible and i think spe as a technology has got its place and will win in this space thank you mark thank you alex um looking at the time i think we have to uh, conclude it here so i want to thank all panelists and i want to make clear to all the people that have uh, listened in to this uh, webcast that uh, you could have already asked your question, but we will still stay on for a little while to answer any other questions you do have in the chat. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and maybe see each other somewhere in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye.